In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Kalamazoo clausing saw in our Gene Haas Advanced Manufacturing Lab. The saw is going to be used to cut our 12-foot extrusions up into workpiece blanks for CNC machining. Now, the saw blade that we have installed on the saw is designed to cut only aluminum. And the speed we have the saw blade set to is designed for aluminum. So if you need to cut steel or some other ferrous material, please contact your department technician and use the saw that's dedicated for those types of workpieces. But anyways, if you plan on using this saw, I would like to orient you with the control panel up here on the top. Number one, we have a key lock switch here. So if you can't get the saw to start, most likely it's locked out. and You'll have to find one of the department technicians or myself in order to unlock the saw for your use. Now, the most important button on this saw is this emergency stop. If anything goes wrong, we want you to hit that emergency stop and that will go ahead and shut down power to, all the, to the saw blade and stop the saw. Now in order to reset the emergency stop, we turn it at 90 degrees and that pops the emergency stop right back out. Now next to the emergency stop we have a power on light. So when the saw blade is running, the light will be yellow. And then we have the, the on switch for the saw. The saw has a limit switch, so when it's down at the bottom of its stroke, you cannot turn it on. Now, moving over, we have the coolant switch. The coolant switch has a one and a zero. Zero means the coolant pump is off. One means the coolant pump is blowing. You want to make sure that you're always using flood coolant while cutting aluminum on this saw. If you have the switch set to one and there's not coolant flowing out next to the blade, you're going to need to go ahead and refill the coolant up to the, the full level. Finally, the last two, the levers and dials over here, allow for the feed rate to be adjusted and to turn the feed on or off. The saw has a hydraulic piston on the back of it that once raised up, you can actually turn on the feed and adjust the feed rate. Normally, for most of the work pieces we cut here in the IME department, the number two would be a great feed rate to start with. And you can adjust it either faster or slower based on how the saw is interacting and curling chips off the workpiece. So your first step is really to raise the saw up to the proper height. Once you have the saw up to the proper height, you want to go ahead and install your extrusion in between the saw's vise. So notice there's a hand wheel down here that operates the vise. You want to go ahead and install your, your extrusion so that the least amount of teeth are engaged when cutting your material. So therefore, you'd want to stand your material up in this direction as opposed to this direction when cutting on this saw. So we're going to install the material. Also, there's a roller in the back of the saw that allows you to adjust the length of your extrusion that you're cutting. Common extrusions come in 12 feet. At this point, we're going to pick up the movable jaw on the vise, slide it in, and get the lead screw to almost start clamping down. We haven't set a distance at this point yet for our cut length, so what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that the stock still can slide in and out so we can set our cut distance. Now, the next step is we want to go ahead and measure the distance between the edge of the saw blade and the end of the stock to set up our cut length. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn the drop speed on and lower the blade down to the right above the top of the workpiece or the material. Once it gets to the top, we're going to go ahead and turn the drop, the, the drop feed off to the off position. Now, I'm going to grab my caliper and set my cut length of my caliper. In this case, I'm going to cut at 3.0. I simply lock my caliper in place at this dimension and I work my way down to the material. I set the back stop of the caliper on the front edge of the material and I back it up until the tongue of the caliper touches the saw blade. I go a little bit lower here. So you'll see the tongue touches the saw blade and basically the back beam on the caliper touches the front of the work. At this point, I'll have the correct length within about 30 thou to go ahead and saw my workpiece. So I go ahead and I turn 
the hand wheel clockwise to clamp the material in the vise. Now, if you're going to be doing uh, uh, more than one workpiece, you might want to set the stop so you cut all the workpieces within a, within close to the same length. Remember, nothing's perfect. Your tolerance on this saw is probably plus or minus about 30 thou. Plus or minus 10 thou if, you, if you're very, very diligent in setting everything up. At this point, I'm going to put my caliper down and show you how to adjust the stop. The stop is adjusted with two different settings here. This one, the top, allows me to adjust the stop rod in and out in order to contact my material. The other one allows me to clamp the stop in place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it up to the workpiece, put it in the bottom right corner. This allows the workpiece to fall away from the blade and not get jammed in the blade. You don't want to go ahead and have the entire stop touching the workpiece or the, the extrusion in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead, clamp that down in place, clamp the stop in place, and now I'm just about ready to cut. So at this point, I'm going to lift up the saw and turn on the saw. I'm going to double check that the coolant is flowing and change my drop rate to 2. At this point, we'll go ahead and turn on the feed and the saw should slowly feed through the workpiece. If the saw starts jumping while cutting, you need to slow down your feed rate. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the feed rate slightly. Notice we have a nice free flow of chips coming off the saw blade, and we're not basically jamming the chips in there as it's dropping. Once the saw passes completely through the material, it'll, the material should drop down into the catch bucket, and the limit switch shuts the saw off. Hence, there's really no need to hit the emergency stop. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and start sawing another workpiece, maybe. So we would go ahead and turn the feed to off, raise up the saw blade above the workpiece, unclamp the vise, and move your stock forward until it hits the stop. Now, we'll go ahead and clamp the workpiece, Turn the saw back on and activate the drop key. second piece of material we should have measured first. However, this was a demo video. Now, one last thing. When you're sawing your workpiece, it leaves a burr on your workpiece. So before you go on to any CNC operations, you're going to want to use your flat file to go ahead and deburr your workpiece edges. Therefore, it locates properly in the CNC milling vise. I hope you've enjoyed this instructional video. Look forward to seeing you again in another video.